I'm frightened. I'm very frightened. Of who, of who you ask? Freddy. And no, not that Freddy. One, two, Freddy's gonna finger somebody. No, he got fingered, actually. Shit. So, yeah. Um, Sucks to be Freddy, I guess. I don't know if he wanted it, but... Well... I guess if he wanted it, it doesn't sound okay. Weird, to be more to be more accurate, I'm more afraid of Tom Green because ever since that blight from Canada ever came down to this country and you know became a shock jock on uh, MTV and went into a uh, went into a, a Jewish synagogue dressed as Adolf Hitler. That's right. That actually happened. That's actually why his show got canceled in the first place. <laughs> so. Tom Green it sounds like he gave very little fucks. <laughs> yeah, and not only that, but Tom Green also, for some reason, married Drew Barrymore uh, for I think like two to three years. So I like Drew Barrymore. I think Drew Barrymore is actually pretty cool. But apparently, she doesn't have the soundest judgment. No. <laughs> oh God, that reminds me of that one uh, that one time on uh, America's Got Talent, and that one guy. Uh, was up on stage and said, no, I've worked too hard for this. I mean, for you to just tear me down like that. And then I think it was Demi Lovato said, uh, said, well, this business isn't meant for everyone. And he goes, I guess that's why you use auto-tune and I don't. <laughs> and then uh, Britney Spears started commenting on it and say, commenting on him and saying, you know, you were, no, you know you're, you're actually starting to creep me out a little bit. You, and uh, So could you please leave the stage? And he goes, oh, so you think I'm a creep? <clears throat> and she goes, yeah, yeah, actually I do, yeah. And he goes, well, considering your relationship history, I'll take that as a compliment. And he just walks off the stage, and I'm just like, oof. Like, Jesus God. Like, like, savage, bro. And um, Tom Green, his career peaked and petered out all within a span of, like, I think a year, year and a half. And uh, during that... Hollywood gave him a try, and that try was Freddy Got Fingered. I watched that movie from beginning to end. It went on forever. It, it, it felt like it went on forever. But turns out the movie was actually only like 80 minutes long, and it's so painfully unfunny, I, I actually, to people actually I don't like in my life, I recommend they watch it. <laughs> And I, well, and I, I, I just don't know what else to say about it. Have you ever seen this film? Nope. Be thankful. That being said, Doug Walker. Fortunately, a, I'm about to see a good summation of it. So. Well, thankfully, we'll have Doug Walker there to attempt to at make le- this funny. Yeah, at least Doug's funny. So. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. God, I'm worried. It's a little bit loud. <laughs> Damn. I was reviewing movies when I was 25 years old. Hard to believe. Some of the old critics never even wore a gun. A lot of folks. No country for old men intro. Jesus. I always like to hear about the old critics. Never miss a chance to do so. Can't help but compare yourself to the old critics. Can't help but wonder how they'd operate in these times with these films. There's this movie. Papers say it was a film of passion, but the director said there wasn't any passion to it. Not in the sense that we think. A passion for something good. He wanted it to be bad. A new kind of bad we've never witnessed. I don't know what to make of that. I surely don't. It's not that I'm afraid of it, but I don't want to push my chips forward and go and confront something I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, he's here. I don't know why he didn't answer any of our calls. He's just been sitting here looking at a movie. All right, I'll see you guys when you get the shoot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Critic, are you okay? Step out of the car, please. What's that? I need you to step out of the car. (laughs) Do it.
I don't know why he's doing No Country for Old Men, but it's one of my favorite movies. So. Yeah, me too. It's pretty awesome. What is that for? Hold still. Please. All right. Jesus. <laughs> Rob, no! Well, critic's an only child now, I think. Welcome to fan video. We don't know how we're still around either. <laughs> That would be oh, what I would have to say no, anytime I, somebody walked in. Business <laughs> worked at a place like that. Was Freddo? I didn't mean nothing by it. Didn't mean nothing. Will there be something else? I don't know. Will there? Is something wrong? Is that what you're asking me? If something's wrong, or if I saw a comedy so bad it changes your perception of bad altogether? You think you've seen every type of shitty humor, gross-out humor, anti-humor? epic movie but then one comes along that's not only bad on purpose but it elevates bad to a new level you didn't even know existed a level that embraces misery to a point that you have to laugh so i guess it's working because it makes you laugh but it's only making you laugh because the only other alternative is to cry you laugh <laughs> jesus god because you have no choice you laugh because it's destroying you a film could do that. Call it. Call what? Just call it. You want to call it the movies? Think <laughs> of the only film that can be impressively bad yet leaves no joy. Can get a laugh even though it's not funny. Can expand someone to a new level of awful he wants to escape yet is constantly drawn in by. What type of bad creates a world so painful that you stay in it? Because it's so fascinating. Oh, well, that's Freddy Got Fingered. Well done. Okay, then I'll just put this back on the shelf. Well, don't put it on the shelf. Well, where am I supposed to put it? Anywhere but not on the shelf. Or else it gets mixed in with the others and just becomes another movie. <laughs> Which it is. <laughs> oh, hey, you forgot your grenade! What? You didn't forget this, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <sighs> yep. Tom Green. In the early 2000s, he became very popular for his unique brand of anti-humor. Some called him an attention-desperate whore, while others called him... Everybody called him an attention-desperate whore, but his fans didn't seem to care. Partaking in shocking stunts most normal people wouldn't do, like sucking a cow's teat, humping a dead moose, or marrying Drew Barrymore, only got him more popularity. To his credit, there were occasional funny bits, like following pizza delivery boys to offer the same pizza for cheaper, demonstrating how to camouflage yourself by blending into the audience. This was a guy who had some comprehension of comedy, but his favorite brand of humor was just being shockingly odd. Putting things in his mouth, um, things in his mouth, and... Yeah, it was very mouth-based. After he starred in a hit film, 20th Century Fox gave him a movie to write, direct, and star in with very little interference. The only thing they seem to put their foot down is that it couldn't be NC-17. In that, we'll still shoot an NC-17 film, we'll just have to bribe the MPAA more than usual to not have it be rated NC-17. Yep. Destroyed by critics, failed at the box office, and won several Razzie Awards, of which Tom Green accepted the awards, even bringing his own red carpet. From day one, when we started writing it, said uh, we wanted to win a Raspberry Award, so so uh, it's, I'm glad my dream has come true. Whatever you thought of this guy, he had a plan, and he achieved it. Whatever it was. The film over the years has been getting a cult following of people saying it's a unique kind of bad. One never truly seen in cinema. A so bad it's bad, and that bad is so bad it's bad, and that bad is so bad it's bad, and that bad is so bad it's good, and that good is so bad it's bad. Was there actual not how it works. put into how purposefully terrible this was? Did it reach a new level of awful that you can actually admire the technique of it? Admire is a bad word to use, but I can think of no other in my current state of shit home syndrome. Let's take a deeper look with. Freddy got fingered. X-ray cat. 
it. You can't get me. You can't get me. You get a glance at what John Chris Lucy now does with his time as we see our main character named Gorn, played by Canada's Punishment, leaves his home during the credits to do some 90s-ing. <laughs> editor was drunk because you know he's doing freddy got finger but he left in these weird freeze frames because you know he's doing freddy got finger who cares this whole intro shows that tom green can skateboard reinforcing the rumor that he is in fact good at something i call it fake news <laughs> he meets up with his parents played by rip torn and julie haggerty who are really wishing right now they had anyone's career that wasn't rip torn or julie haggerty <laughs> i believe in my son you be a good man Gord says he's going to Hollywood to become a famous animator like Charles Schultz. I'm going to be a famous animator like Charles Schultz. Who was a comic strip artist, not an animator. I'm not <laughs> implying you don't know this, I'm implying Tom Green doesn't know this. And we see this dialogue is so repetitive, it's borderline funny. In fact, you can measure the amount of laughter it almost gets by how many times they say the word proud. You make your daddy proud. You hear me? I'm going to make you proud, daddy. I'm going to make you so proud. You make your daddy proud. You're going to be so proud. 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 Get the fuck out of the way! Yep, see, that was close. But then it continued to exist. On his way there, he sees a horse dick, screams, pulls over, and jerks it off. Life has given me that sentence to report to you. There's no reason for why he pulled over, screamed, and touched that horse, and it never came back into the movie. Yeah, I thought that was this movie. Yeah, somebody told me about that in school. He you didn't believe it, did you? Animation. No, I believed it. Calls it. I was just so like, why? But he first gets and they said this movie was hilarious, too. Where he does this. I'm a sexy boy! So at least uh, fifth or sixth graders could find this hilarious. How would you like to put that on your resume? I was the woman who got slapped by Tom Green's salami dick. You deserve an Oscar just for being near him. Ouch. He sneaks into the studio where a secretary, played by Drew Barrymore, talks to him, which is impressive because the film is now presenting four to five failed career choices in one continuous shot. You're just suddenly reminded of all the wrong things these two actors did in their lifetimes. His wife is dead. What? He tells cousin It that he's there to tell one of them <laughs> that his wife is dead, as well as inform them that the color corrector has died, seeing how these two shots clearly don't match up. I guess you could argue this brightness contrast in green tint is part of the purposefully bad filmmaking, even though it doesn't <laughs> happen anywhere else in the film. But I like to think they're in the Matrix, and Morpheus is going to erase the glitch that is Tom Green. What if I told you you're annoying as balls? Could I be your boyfriend? Get out of here! <laughs> Fuck off! You're a skinny loser! Hey, I think this is how they divorced. <laughs> Definitely how they divorced. Yeah. He finds the head of the studio, played by Anthony Michael Hall, who's slowly realizing weird science might be the most normal thing he's ever been in. My name's Gord, and I want to meet you to show you my drawings. Your drawings? To make things stranger, I swear, there's a heavier version of Hall sitting directly behind him. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, you're right. At the yep. Breakfast Club, even down to wearing the exact same suit, but with black and white shirts. Which is also ironic, because you both look like you're auditioning for Cobra Kai. I'm not saying this film is dumb <laughs> enough to do that. I'm saying this film is not smart enough to be that dumb. Okay, so let me get this right. You want to just barge into a restaurant, dress like a fucking English Bobby, and expect someone to give you a TV show? Why not? That's how I got this movie. Paul tells him that while the drawings are good, nothing funny is happening, and he needs to flesh out the characters more to make something of worth. This is literally before he goes back home, and we find out more about the characters that are going to be in most of the movie. What you need here is elevation, okay? There actually has to be something that happens that's actually funny. I hate to say it, but that can't be a coincidence. That must have taken... thought. I'm trying to give you a piece of advice. You gotta figure these animals out. You gotta figure them out. You gotta get inside the animals. I gotta get inside the animals? Get inside the animals. Well, dicks, I wonder where this is going. <laughs> yeah. That happened. I'll give it this. It could be funny if he's approached by Nicolas Cage in a bear suit who punches him to the ground. We all know Cage will do anything. He'll probably do it twice. After dressing up in the deer's dead skin, he's hit by a truck that, quite frankly, I want to see again. Why couldn't the editor choose to freeze that scene? One more time. <laughs> so he goes back home, the anime... That should have been the end of the movie right there. Yeah. That should have been it. Just Save everyone else. That's it. <laughs> okay.
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Tragic death of a an, of a wannabe animator on his way back home <laughs> in the middle of a deer carcass, hit by a semi truck. And they didn't show this, but he actually got up from getting hit by that, and it, the he went back to his car doing this, going. <laughs> I think that was people when they realized, oh God, it didn't kill him. Yeah. Like yeah, that moment of hysteria. Animation plot doesn't really come back except for a few minutes at the end, and most of the movie is just him with his family. I'd say how random, but it weirdly enough feels very planned out. In fact, in another bizarre twist, his best friend is played by Harlan Williams. For those who don't know, this is one of the most surreal, zaniest stand-ups you could imagine. When you want things to get weird, you always have him show up. This is true. Timber shlorkety dark, florkety dark. I see you moved the sideburns from your butt cheeks up to the side of your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He casts him as the straight man, the common sense guy who tries to be reasonable to Green's crazy antics. What do you think it's kind of dark, Gord? It's late. You're gonna wake up your parents. You gotta work tomorrow, you know. You see, this is more than just one giant middle finger. This is a giant middle finger made up of tiny little middle fingers that compose the entire thing. It's a middle finger on Damn, so Damn, I can actually levels. see it. I do hope it upholds Rip Torn's contract of any time he's in a movie he has to scream gibberish. Well, I think the live-action Lion King found their first note for Circle of Life. <laughs> it actually works. It will evoke tears. Look, his friend hurt his leg. We need an idiot to put his tongue on it. Tom, do you know of anyone that can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're turned on for this. He visits his friend in the hospital, where we come across the only consistently funny character, Betty. She was. I wanted the film to be about her. She's awesome. No, sometimes, sometimes people, um, sometimes people here die of cancer. Okay, so it is possible to make Tom Green's writing funny. Good to know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Betty. And I'm the two kids from BoJack pretending to be an adult. Surprisingly, I've made a good career out of it. He hits it off with her, and they schedule a date as he visits his friend who's next to a woman giving birth. Oh, the possibilities are one. Oh, it's okay. I'm a doctor. No. I got it. I got it. I got it. Did you know the original title for this was "The Audience Got Fisted"? After biting the umbilical cord with his teeth, because at this point I'd be shocked if he didn't do that. He swings the baby around to wake it up, and quite literally, with no segue, it's an emotional moment. I mean it, no segue. Watch. <laughs> it's actually so jarring how much the two don't go together, and how much it has nothing to do with anything in the film. I thought about laughing. And then I whipped myself. Whipping myself felt better. Speaking of which, Gord goes to Betty's place where he discovers she gets incredibly turned on when she's hit with a bamboo stick. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Look, only in the to the one person whose fetish is finally being lived out, congratulations. To the rest of us, what the shit is going on? He also discovers that she wants to be a rocket scientist so she can have a rocket power her chair. I mean, you tried to make the rocket wheelchair work, but it doesn't work. That must make you feel like a stupid dummy, right? Oh, don't try to be charming now, Tom Green. You're so naturally likable. <sighs> he accidentally hits her in the face, though, which means he's earned a blowjob. I'm gonna give you a blowjob. I think this is how most Tom Green fans think dating works. She discovers, though, that he still has his umbilical cord. It's taped. It's just for fun. I taped it there for fun. I can't think of any possible way to make that funny, so I'm just going to continue with the story I started before. Hey, Critic, are you fuck? here? You weren't at the studio. Are we still shooting today? Man, I got my costume and everything. Hello, Malcolm. Let's go to my room. Jesus. 
So he had to cross like his review with a good movie this. to make up for how bad this one was. Let me ask yeah. you this. If a film is meant to be so bad that nobody would like it, then what is the purpose of the film if people like it? Is it a failure if it's hated by everyone? Or a failure if it's enjoyed by a select few, even some well-known names? Do you have any idea how crazy you are? You mean the nature of this movie? I mean the nature of you. Did you ever think how much thought would go into making the absolute worst thing ever? If you believe, as some philosophers do, that complete perfection is hell, then what's the opposite? What's heaven? Nothing but flaws. Oh my god, are you one of those assholes that defends Freddy Got Fingered? Well. I guess. No. <laughs> that really hurt. <laughs> A lot. Uh, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Yes. <clears throat> Is Malcolm there? Not in the sense that you mean. Critic? What's going on? Where's Malcolm? You need to come see me. Are we shooting today or what? You know how this is going to turn out, don't you? What in the hell are you talking about? Line from No Country for Old Men. <laughs> Just stay there. I'm going to come and shoot, okay? Oh, by the way, how was the movie? me, critic. I don't freaking know. I thought about that thing hitting that guy's forehead in No Country for Old Men and it hurts my head. What, the cow crowd? Yeah. Or the, or the stun gun? Yeah. To take a shower back the at uh, home. piston it's gun. Get out of my goddamn scuba gear, you imbecile! That too deserves repeating. Escapes this realm of madness, squeezing past the camera that even leaves a shadow on him. Another glitch in the Matrix. Laura knows I could use an exploding Hugo weaving at this point. He talks with his brother Freddy, who works at a bank, and constantly tells Gord he needs to grow up. Just cross her fingers and hope that I get a job. I'm serious. All right, fingers crossed. I hope I get a jobby. I got my fingers Bye, crossed. Gord. I got my fingers crossed. Oh, I get it. This movie sucks. I'm actually wondering was if there was an Oscar-caliber film about a dysfunctional family who has to deal with their son who's addicted to drugs. They just forgot to put the drugs part in. This would be a dramatic powerhouse if he was on crystal meth. Did you get a job? I got a job, and I wanted to surprise you. He lies to both his father and Betty that he got a job, and Betty takes him out to celebrate. Oh, I know this place. It's the same upscale restaurant that doesn't allow Mr. Bean, the Three Stooges, Ace Ventura, the Marx Brothers, Charlie Chaplin, Benny Hill, Laurel and Hardy, Jerry Lewis, or the Tiny Toons in. I believe it's called Fine How Do You Do. <laughs> Again, though, just listen to this dialogue and tell me they're not aware, if not mocking, this exact setup. Would you like a piece of cake for dessert? Am I really allowed a piece of cake, Daddy? Of course you can have a piece of cake. It's your birthday. Yay! Yay! Daddy? Of course you... I'm more mesmerized by that guy's chin. Look at that thing. Jesus. That chin is so... Uh, it's quite a chin. Like, honestly, he could blow his nose and wipe his ass at the same time. <laughs> Jesus. We can have a piece of cake. It's your birthday. Yay! Yay! I'm honestly shocked the restaurant dialogue isn't just replaced with this. Most orthodox, most orthodox, most orthodox, most orthodox, most orthodox, most orthodox, most orthodox. Is your job really hard? I mean, I have graphs. I have some graphs I can show you. If you pay attention to these patterns here, you can see on the graphs. I think we're witnessing the pitch for the movie here. Why would this do well? Graphs. Just graphs. You're fired. You're fucking fired, Bob. I'm talking about 40 million fucking points work here, Bob. You know, he seems like an unsuccessful Gruber brother. Hans, Simon, and Gord. More focused on terrorism of comedy. If you laugh, he shoots you. Gord's <laughs> father sees he lied, though, and calls him out on it. Wait a minute. You're a cripple. Dad. 
Hey, now, just shut up, okay? Just shut up! Yeah, don't you know it's offensive to use that word? Now this shit... Look at me, Daddy, I'm a farmer! Ding dong! Ding dong! Class. Big surprise, they trash the place and are told to stop because it's a fancy restaurant. No, really, those are the exact words. This is a fancy restaurant! This is a fancy restaurant! It's kind of like saying, don't trash the Taj Mahal, it's... Mm! Betty bails him out, which is kind of funny, thinking the parents just left him there in jail, and she says he should have just told her the truth. You could have told me that you lived at home, I wouldn't have cared. Even though that means I'm a loser? Just because you're not a stockbroker doesn't mean you're a loser. Being Tom Green is because you're a loser. <laughs> oh, here's an important fact. <laughs> oh, my ear popped. My ear just popped. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard it. Uh, when I laughed, my ear popped. <laughs> oh my god. That was written into the movie. Somebody said it was essential for those words to go in that moment. She advises him to relax by eating, playing music, and drawing. So you get this remix of nightmares that you've had for the past couple weeks. Fanny, would you like some sausage? Fanny, would you like some sausages? Fanny, would you like some sausage? Fun fact, this is a dark ride at Disneyland's ninth level of hell. Fanny, would you like some sausage? Fanny, would you like some sausages? Okay, so this is gonna sound strange. Yeah, but listen to this line. If this were Pakistan, you would have been sewing soccer balls when you were four years old. I want you to remember he said that line, because believe it or not, there is a weird-ass way it comes back into the story. Don't guess how. You can't. No, really, don't. You can't. Just stop. You can't. So his best friend says that his father really- You can't! Give up! So his best friend says his father really seems like a character, and he should focus more on him. And that's exactly what the movie suddenly does. There's a lot more focus on the father and his connection with Gord for a long time. I think an Academy Award nominated script owes someone some royalties. His father runs over a skateboard ramp as once again it goes from crazy taxi music to emotional music in the length of a bed bunk's disc throw. We shouldn't put up with the way he treats us. If I were you, I wouldn't stand for it. If I were you, I'd go out, I'd have sex with strange men, I'd have sex with basketball players, I'd have sex with Greeks. You will believe God hates you and wants you to know it. We cut to a scene where they're at a family psychiatrist, but honestly, I think this scene exists just to have Tom Green and Sigmund Freud in the same frame. Because let's face it, that opportunity will never happen again. Well, at least I don't touch Freddy. Very well. He fingers him. Yeah, I guess we're almost two thirds done with the movie. Might as well have some reference to the title. I am required by law to notify the authorities. <laughs> you hear that, Dad? You're gonna pay! Ah! Humanity was a mistake. Ah! Ah! You liar! We then cut to Freddy watching someone's insides get ripped out of him by supposed professionals. Again, that can't be a coincidence. The doctor comes to take Freddy away despite him denying that his dad ever touched him. It's not your fault your dad fingered you. What are you talking about? My dad doesn't finger me. Come on, son. We'll take you out of here. The music almost sounded disappointed that he wasn't fingered. Hell, with this film, maybe we're supposed to be. He's taken away and his father gets drunk, claiming he didn't do anything sexually wrong while doing something sexually wrong. Well, I can cross that off my bucket list, seeing Rip Torn's naked ass and regretting it. I was very drunk when I made that list. Gord decides to give up on his dreams as I'm Betty to continues work. to work on her rocket power that. chair and, let me guess, Gord comes to be a jackass. Shut up, Betty. Shut up. Can't you see we're both just a couple of stupid idiots? Gord! Gord! Gordy! Alright, look, lady, I know you're a crazy, horny, obsessive, emotionally denying, masochistic nymphomaniac, but you can still do better than Tom Green! You seeing anybody? <laughs> Don't cut to Freddy. Okay, hey, that's funny. Institute for Sexually Molested Children? Does it Where he's exhale. surrounded by out of control kids listening to creepy music and watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre? You got fingered? No. Okay? It's okay. I know. I wasn't here for a second, was I? No. That scene actually took me someplace else. A place not of this realm. It was not a good place. In fact, it was a very, very bad place. 
one of the worst places I've ever been. But it was so bad, I almost want to go back to it. I want to study it. I want to understand how on every level of unpleasantness this scene went above and beyond what I thought possible in a film. James Gunn was fired for tweeting scenes like this. Yeah. And this guy was given $14 million to bring it to the big screen. I have never yeah. witnessed a scene like that in cinema. And only this story and this tone could build up to something so heinous. There is no place you can look, no area you can escape to, nothing else you can think about except every possible ugliness crammed into this one moment. You saw it, didn't you? I can't unsee it. That's why you're standing there, aren't you? Instead of running out and calling the police like what that woman should have done, no country for old men. I totally don't get why she didn't do that. He was really far away. She had plenty of time to get out of there. But this scene... <laughs> <laughs> People always say the same thing. What Why? do they say? They say, you don't have to view this. You don't? I need to understand what can't be understood, what shouldn't be understood. So call it. Are you watching the rest of the movie with me? Or are you taking the other way out? I knew you were crazy when I saw you watching that movie. Call it. No, I ain't calling it. Call it. The movie doesn't have any say. It's you. You decide what has worth and what doesn't. Call it. Take the bottom of your shoes. By the way, I totally killed her. Yeah. So after every terrible thing you can imagine is put on screen, we then cut to Leave it to Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. They even cut back to it twice after that scene. Leave it to Beaver. I don't know what they're doing, but I know they're doing it! Gord's mother leaves the movie because, oh Jesus, she needs a reason. And I never fingered Freddy! <laughs> oh yeah, there's a running joke that this kid always gets hurt. I guess I was too busy mentioning the other child abuse to bring up that child abuse. Life choices. <laughs> Gord sees that Betty accomplished her dreams, though, which gives him inspiration to accomplish his. Bringing his story about a zebra centaur family to the studio. Half zebra. Right. Clash of the Titans. That's yeah, it. right, sure. I saw it. Yeah, I get half it. Half man, it. half zebra mutant. He's a, he's a the myth. The myth. He's a, it's a myth. It's like a, Greek, it's like a Greek myth. Interesting note, this page of the script wasn't written, so they just improvised the whole thing. Sure. It's like a Greek myth, sure. except African. African myth. African American Greek myth. I'm amazed how much it shows too. His dad follows him in, taking out Barrymore in his anger. Well, it's more kind than the other version they shot. His father tears up the place, which of course convinces the producer to write a check. I have never seen a more creative or exciting pitch than that. I wasn't even thinking about writing a check today. I'm completely comfortable greenlighting this fucking project. I think we just saw how most adult swim shows are made. Listen to my hooves! Yeah. Listen to my hooves! Yeah. Yep, definitely a documentary on adult swim show creators. He makes the show, grabs a helicopter, and confesses his love to Betty. I think because he felt big things had to happen at the end, even though there's no reason. No, I'm not mocking the film. I really think that's the mindset. I'm giving in to the Stockholm. So I just wanna... And so is she, clearly. He then takes the majority of his budget money and spends it all on one big stunt, acknowledging he totally wasted his big opportunity. And then you have the $750,000, that's all my money. That's all my money gone. <laughs> oh, easy come, easy go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's aware, it's aware. It's like watching Caesar, this dumb animal becoming more and more conscious but not wanting to let anyone catch on. You damn dirty ape, what are you up to? So, you remember that line the father had from earlier? If this were Pakistan, you would have been sewing soccer balls when you were four years old. Well, Gore took part of his house with his father in it to Pakistan. 
Now, you might be wondering what's the connection outside of the father just saying the word Pakistan once. I have no idea, but he did say it, and I'm reporting on it. Please send your fan theories to this address and never breed. <laughs> Couldn't even center the one week later caption. In any other film, I'd say that's a mistake, but I don't think it is here. I think he did it on purpose just to make everything in this goddamn film a little off. You know he'd do it! You know that's what happened. So after yeah. he sprays his father with <laughs> elephant jizz, this film really is too predictable, they finally seem to patch things up. What the hell it is they're patching up, I have no idea. Be the man you want me to be, but I'm your son. I want you to be proud. Aw, it's the heart of the film. And that he's probably gonna eat the heart of a cow or something. But they're captured and held hostage, causing a worldwide movement of people and news organizations demanding to let them go. Even his mother and new lover Shaquille O'Neal are concerned. I did all this for you. Nipples pierced. Can you do it like this? Huh? Can you do it like that? I didn't do all of this. How did they convince? Horrible moment you realize you can go lower than Kazam. So how are Gord and his father going to get out of this? It's not really made clear. The movie just says they were freed and everyone is on the runway ready to greet him. Just when you're wondering when this movie is going to end, so is the movie. That's really a sign someone is holding as they return. You know, this would be really good if it was good. But the kid runs after them and gets chopped up by the propeller, crying that he's still okay. I'm okay! I'm okay, Daddy! Well, of course it would end there. I wouldn't imagine anything less because... <sighs> I actually can't imagine anything less. <gasps> they then show all the scenes that weren't good enough for the movie. I as well was shocked such a concept exists. And let's give credit that the final thing said is the exact perfect line to end this film. I think that's the most poignant question you could ask this movie, but I will say, I did ask it. It is hard to find words to describe the impact this film has left. It is clearly bad, and it is intended to be bad, probably aiming to be the baddest thing humanly possible. It's too self-aware to just be run-of-the-mill dumb, but the level of insulting idiocy is so grand, you could call it ahead of its time in terms of troll humor. Possibly even the greatest troll movie ever made. It's like the film wants to be a regular bad comedy, but it's too dumb to know how to do it. And it glorifies the hell out of knowing that. It achieves exactly what it's looking for, pissing off everyone in the stupidest of ways. And my inner troublemaker has a strange respect for that. It's the Barton Fink of bad films. I don't always know the intent behind the madness, but I'm convinced the filmmakers know. I had never come across a movie like this in my life. I hate everything about it for the exact same reasons I love everything about it. And this is a whole new phenomenon that comes from him. Him. You know, I had a dream the other night. There were two pits. One was filled with the most delicious caviar the world has ever known. And the other was filled with shit. Tom Green difference? showed up in the carcass of a dead deer and he dived into that pile of shit. He dug so deep into it that he actually found a little bit of caviar that mixed in with the shit. None of us wanted to try it, but he forced it on us. The combination created a brand new flavor never tasted by anyone. It was the most unique tasting thing anyone had ever put in their mouths. It was beyond description. Tom Green winked and said, there's plenty more where that came from. But you can only find it in the shit. I walked up on the edge of that pit, stared out over the biggest pile of shit I've ever seen in my life. I bent over, I took one big breath, and then I woke up. And for those of you who think I killed my entire cast for this movie.
I did kill Rob, though. He owed me two dollars. <laughs> can't tell you how bad I dislike this film. Look. It sounds like that's the point of it, though. No, no, no. I understand. It's... I look at Tom Green as the same kind of sadomasochistic bastard who delights in torturing others as much as he delights in torturing himself. If people like this film, more power to them. I hate this film. I hate it. I want it to die in a fire. I want every single copy of it to be thrown into a pit of despair and the people who want to save it dive in right after it and I never see them again. I, look, people want to talk about this being a masterpiece ahead of its time and all this and all that. You know, the precursor to BoJack Horseman. The precursor to all of these other, like, off-the-wall, nutty, crazy, astronomically, like, like loopy and dumb shows that shouldn't work, but for some reason do. I cannot find value in this film. I tried watching it. I tried liking it as a kid and as an adult. That's right. I watched this film twice. <laughs> trying to understand. And if I don't get it, I don't want to get it. I know there are people out there who love this film. Go ahead. If you masturbate to it, go ahead. I don't care. It's just... I cannot express just how unfunny and unbelievably stupid this film is. And deliberately so by Tom Green. He said he wanted to make something deliberately stupid. He succeeded. Congratulations. This is your magnum opus of shit. This is your <laughs> this is your pièce de résistance of piss and and oh. Uh, uh, oh, it brings me physical pain to relive this fucking movie. In any shape or form. I don't even know what to say about it. It's just like it. It's like honestly amusing to me, like that someone just took the time to do something like that fucking stupid. Well, yeah, he took the time to do it, and now people are loving him for it. I I don't love him for it. I'm just kind of like. Not it's like, it's like a, yeah, it's like a, it's like a weird kind of like, not really respect, but it just kind of like. A curiosity? It's. Um. What's, what would be a good word for it? I don't know. It's like. I, I admire someone throwing away that much of their time, I guess. On something like that. I can understand if a vision, uh, uh, look, I can understand if someone has a vision of something and donates so much of their life towards it. It's like Stanley Kubrick donated so much of his time to the movie Artificial Intelligence, and he died before he could finish it. Mm. So instead, Steven Spielberg decided, hey, we're going to finish it. But the way that Spielberg did it a lot of people said that it doesn't work. And that's fine. Me watching this, I can't help but just think, Tom Green, it, in terms of the surrealistic humor, like there were certain things that he did that was actually pretty funny. Certain things. But overall as a package, with him being in full control of everything... I really could not bring myself to like this. And, I don't think you're meant to, anyways. So. Well, and look, maybe that's the point. Maybe that is the point of doing that. I cannot bring myself to like this, though. I can't bring myself to even think of this in a positive light. 
Maybe that's the reason I don't like shows like BoJack Horseman. Wait, maybe that's the reason I don't like a lot of shows nowadays. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that one either. I don't get that one. Well, there's certain shows that I do like. I do like. Uh, I do like Robot. Well, at least I did like Robot Chicken. I liked Robot Chicken for like the first four or five seasons, and then it, and then I eventually just started to run out of patience with it. Oh, oh well, I will say like okay. There's two things. Like everybody's different in terms of like what they find funny. Yeah. I agree. Um, so, like I said, I've talked to someone who said that they thought this was hilarious, but they were very young at the time. I feel like there's a certain, like, mental, like, frequency you can be on, possibly at a certain age in your life, where you can be like, ha, 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 ha he's jacking off a horse, you know? But yeah. It's like, it's a certain level of immaturity to be able to find that funny as well. Well. Uh, but then the second thing is just that, like, with, with random humor, and that kind of feeds into the first thing, it's like, everybody finds different stuff like funny is like there there's a level of like randomness and fucking weirdness that is fucking hilarious and I think that he purposefully took that concept and tried to make sure that he didn't make it to where it would be actually funny and I think he was purposefully doing that because it's like Aqua Teen Hunger Force right it's like what kind of drugs were the guys who made Aqua Teen Hunger Force on well the problem with the thing about Aqua Teen Hunger Force is I find the char- some of the characters are like. Well, yeah, it's fucking I, hilarious. Well, I like, but it's well, random as fuck. Well, the it's like why are the characters okay. like a shake and a box of fries and but a that's meatball? That's randomness. That's randomness. They have that a real person present- as a next door neighbor. That's randomness that is presented in an animated universe where your imagination can do a lot of the work for you. This is a real life scenario. This is a real life movie that someone acted out in real life. Yeah. Now, there's certain surreal things that you can get away with in animation. For instance, Meatwad, you know, M- Meatwad, Shake, uh, and Shake, and Carl becoming zombies that that Frylock, you know, caused to happen. Like, if you do that, like, you show, like, Frylock slicing one of them in half or something like that. That can be funny in a shocking way. And also, uh, you see Master Shake hold the sword up to proclaim he's the Highlander, get struck by lightning, and then fall on the ground, and then burst into flames. Little bit grill on the mount. <laughs> yeah. And you see, you can get away with that in the animated world. Was it, there's two kinds of what the fuck. There's, <laughs> what the fuck? And then there's, what the fuck? Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's and what this me, was. And for me, that's what, what yeah, that's what fuck? this one is. Because in the, in the real world, there's certain types of comedy that do work in live action. More so now than ever because of CG because of because of standards changing and everything because of filming techniques and it's and it does work in some cases but with this there is nothing that is happening in this that I find even remotely funny and there's and there is the thing of being unfunny uh, something being so awkward and unfunny that it is funny but it eventually wears off like with me it was Mike Myers when I started to realize in his films that he would say stuff that isn't funny, and him realizing it wasn't funny made it funny. And eventually, I started to pick up on that, and as soon as I picked up on it, it's all I could see. That's why eventually he petered out. That's why whenever he did The Cat in the Hat, it bombed. When he did The Guru, it bombed. Yeah. And that's why whenever people, like nowadays, whenever I watch a Steven Spielberg film, I have to look for the spotlight fetish. I have to look for that <laughs> spotlight in the background that's just going to be staring me in the eyes, trying to put the whimsy in my mind. But it ain't going to happen because I'm too used to it. And it's just like this. I gave this a shot. I tried. I tried to find some value in this. But the only value that I can find is only one or two likable characters. One, the girl, who honestly I just find to be funny, and the fact that she was in Super Troopers is even better. That's Ursula from Super Troopers. I mean, the fact that she was in this was awesome. And I found her funny. And in certain cases, I found the interactions with Rip Torn to be pretty funny. But Tom Green, I... There was a time I actually did laugh at some of his stuff. Me and my friends would watch him on MTV, and it would be pretty damn funny. But then, eventually, it wore off. But yet again... I don't think the point is for this to be something you're supposed to find any value in or find funny. Like, I don't think that's why it's why it exists. And it's like the fact that you don't find 
any value in it means it achieved what it was set out to do. Look, no, but in terms of that, and you know, anti humor. I understand anti humor. It's I, not even really anti humor. It's it's just someone specifically being like can I make a film that presents itself as supposedly a comedy film, but actually is not the least bit funny at all? And yes. Then what's the point? But there's really not one. <laughs> it's just he just did it just to do it. That's why I said I kind of admire it that he just threw away that much time and money on something like this. He it's did. not really a good kind of admiration. It's just kind of like, somebody actually did that. Well, no, I can understand, like, the trollish nature in some cases. I can see that as one or two, or as something. But as some, but as a person who delights in creating stuff, me, and like, like me seeing someone create a masterwork, uh, it's like every time the Coen brothers come out with something, I'm excited. Mm. Whenever the, uh, whenever, um, What's what's his name? Whenever Emmanuel Lubezki does a uh, you know does cinematography for a film, I'm excited. Whenever I see uh, whenever I see one of the three amigos do a film, you know Guillermo del Toro, Alejandro González Señorito, uh, and Alfonso Cuarón, also David Fincher. Whenever he does a project, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. But with this, I never want to see Tom Green again. And, and, and I think maybe that's, that's his, the point. That's maybe, his goal. Like maybe, pretty much, maybe yeah. that was the point. Maybe that was the point of this whole thing. Maybe he that, just didn't like being in film and on TV and stuff, and he just kind of wanted to commit career suicide. That's why he did it. Who knows? Dude, it's like with dude, those that's kind the of same things. As Gigi Allen for his final show took a shit in the middle of the dance floor, rolled around in it, and then after finishing his set, goes outside, rolls around in the street, butt naked, goes up to his hotel room and commits suicide. Well, Gigi Allen was a crazy motherfucker. Of course he was. Certifiable. Um, God, dude. But yeah, it's just like, it doesn't really make me that angry that this exists. It's just more like, huh. That's the thing that happened. <laughs> well, it makes, well, it, it upsets me to my very core. Because I, I tried, to, I tried to like this. I tried. I, I don't I think you friend, were supposed to, though. I tried to explain to me how this has some sort of comedic merit. I don't think they're exactly like on point with that. It's like it, it that's the point is it doesn't. It's not supposed well, to. Well, it's the same thing when people talk about how Holden Caulfield, you know, from Catcher in the Rye is supposed to be some profound intellectual. He's not. He's a spoiled brat who says a few swear words. Oh, the travesty. And then of course there's also uh, you know, uh, Andy Warhol. Everyone want to pretend Andy Warhol's some great artist. No, he was a pale ass white boy who put up one too many who put up one too many pictures. Oh, and put out a, what was it, a 24-hour epic that showed uh, one side of a relationship and another that went nowhere. Not a great artist, at least to me. Well, everybody finds value in different things in terms of art as well. Um, whereas, like, I mean, some people, you know, you could, uh, for example, it's like, I want to make some art. So I'm going to bend this slightly. And then just display it on a little stand, and that's my art. And some people would be like, and then yeah, some people are that. just like, "That's the dumbest thing let I've let ever me seen." See it. Let me, don't you, don't, don't fuck up it. my snoo scan, no. Okay. No, yeah, okay. it's still got a bunch of. It. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I want to make some art too. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I know. This is like a thing. <sighs> I think some certain people can appreciate what what he was trying to do and then certain people like are just gonna be really hey, look, p- pissed off that he tried to do it <laughs> hey look I'm an artist it's and I can only guess too it's like most of what I'm saying is kind of just guessing but like in, in my opinion he accomplished his goal hey look I'm an artist was his goal anything that makes the world a better place not really no like, was his goal stupid? Yeah, kind of, but he, he accomplished it. And I don't know if he accomplished it through some sort of, like, careful, uh... Nice. Landed it right on the shelf. That's actually pretty legit. Um, I don't know if he accomplished it through, like, you know, luck, or actually, like, some sort of determined, like, uh, strategic uh, assembling of something very bad. But, either way, I think he accomplished what he was trying to do. 
it's just a thing that happened though it's not anything i really find value in i'm not ever gonna go watch it i'm just kind of like huh okay all right <laughs> well ladies and gentlemen this and a little was, bit of a what the fuck <laughs> this was something that happened and i'm i'm very upset that i had to go through it again but at the same time oh well um anyway this uh this was a nostalgia critic uh review of freddy got fingered and if you want to see the original video, link is always in the description down below. Go check out uh, Channel Awesome and Doug Walker's channel. I will always say that because I like what Doug Walker puts out. And I guess until next time, everybody, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nate. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.